Skandis Sanskrit or Khandis Pali means heaps, aggregates, collections, groupings. In Buddhism, it refers to the five aggregates of clinging pancha upadanakanda, the five bodily and mental factors that take part in the rise of craving and clinging. They are also explained as the five factors that constitute and explain a sentient being's person and personality, but this is a later interpretation in response to Sarvastivadin essentialism. The five aggregates or heaps are form or matter or body, rupa, sensations or feelings received from form, vedana, perceptions, samshna, mental activity or formations, sankara, and consciousness, vijnana. In the Theravada tradition, suffering arises when one identifies with or clings to the aggregates. This suffering is extinguished by relinquishing attachments to aggregates. The Mahayana tradition asserts that the nature of all aggregates is intrinsically empty of independent existence. Etymology Skanda is a Sanskrit word that means, "...multitude, quantity, aggregate." Generally in the context of body, trunk, stem, empirically observed gross object or anything of bulk verifiable with senses. The term appears in the Vedic literature. The Pali equivalent word khanda sometimes spelled K -kanda appears extensively in the Pali canon, where state Rhys Davids and William stayed, it means, "...bulk of the body, aggregate, heap, material collected into bulk." In one context all that is comprised under groupings in some contexts and particularly as the elements or substrata of sensory existence sensorial aggregates which condition the appearance of life in any form paul williams et al translate skanda as heap aggregate stating it refers to the explanation of the psychophysical makeup of any being johannes bronckhorst renders skanda as aggregates Damien Keown and Charles Prebish state that skanda is fung po in Tibetan, and the terms mean collections or aggregates or bundles. Topic: <laughs> Description of the five skandhas. The Buddha teaches in the Pali Canon the five aggregates as follows: form or matter. Skt, Pali Rupa Rupa, Tib, G Zugs, matter, body or material form of a being or any existence. Buddhist texts state Rupa of any person, sentient being and object to be composed of four basic elements or forces, earth solidity, water cohesion, fire heat and wind motion. Sensation or feeling. Skt, Pali Vedana Vedana, Tib. T shore ba, sensory experience of an object. It is either pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. Discrimination. Skt, sanjnya samnya, pali sanya sanya, tib. Dushis, sensory and mental process that registers, recognizes and labels for instance, the shape of a tree, color green, emotion of fear. Mental formations. Skt, sanskara samskara, pali sankara sankara, tib. Do bide. Constructing activities. Conditioned things. Volition. Karmic activities. All types of mental imprints and conditioning triggered by an object. Includes any process that makes a person initiate action or act. Consciousness. Skt. Vijnana Vijnana, Pali Vijnana Vijnana, Tib. Rnam Par Shis Pa. Discrimination. Or discernment awareness of an object and discrimination of its components and aspects and as of six types states peter harvey the buddhist literature discusses this skanda as in the nikayas agamas cognizance that which discerns in the abhidhamma a series of rapidly changing interconnected discrete acts of cognizance in some mahayana sources the base that supports all experience Topic. Interpretation
Topic: <laughs> Aggregates of personality. The five aggregates are often interpreted in the later tradition as an explanation of the constituents of person and personality, and the list of aggregates became extremely important for the later development of the teaching. According to this interpretation, in each skanda, body, sensations, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness, there is emptiness and no substance. According to Damien Keown and Charles Prebish, skanda in the context of canonical Buddhism asserts that the notion of a self is unnecessarily superimposed upon five skanda of a phenomenon or a living being. The Skanda doctrine, state Matthew McKenzie, is a form of anti-realism about everyday reality including persons, and presents an alternative to substantialist views of the self. It is a Buddhist reductionism of everything perceived, each person and personality as an aggregate, heap, of composite entities without essence. According to Harvey, the five skandhas give rise to a sense of personality, but are dukkha, impermanent, and without an enduring self or essence. Each aggregate is an object of grasping, clinging, at the root of self identification as I, me, myself. According to Harvey, realizing the real nature of skandhas, both in terms of impermanence and non self, is necessary for nirvana. This emptiness from personality can be found in descriptions of the enlightened, perfected state of Arhat and Tathagata, where there is no longer any identification with the five skandhas. This no essence view has been a source of sustained questions, major disagreements, and commentaries since ancient times, by non-Buddhist Indian religions, as well as within Buddhist traditions. The use of the skandhas concept to explain the self is unique to Buddhism among major Indian religions, and must be seen in the contexts of polemics about the Sarvastivada teachings that phenomena, or its constituents are real. It contrasts with the premise of Hinduism and Jainism that a living being has an eternal soul or metaphysical self. David Kalupahana further explains that the individual is considered unreal, but the skanda are considered real in some early Buddhist texts, but the skanda too are considered unreal and non-substantial in numerous other Buddhist Nikaya and Agama texts. Topic. Aggregates of experience and grasping According to Thanissaro, the Buddha never tried to define what a person is, though scholars tend to approach the skandhas as a description of the constituents of the person. He adds that almost any Buddhist meditation teacher explains it that way, as even Buddhist commentaries from about 1st century CE onwards have done. In Thanissaro's view, this is incorrect, and he suggests that skanda should be viewed as activities, which cause suffering, but whose unwholesome workings can be interrupted. Rupert Gethin also notes that the five skandhas are not merely the Buddhist analysis of man, but five aspects of an individual being's experience of the world, encompassing both grasping and all that is grasped. Boisvert states that Many scholars have referred to the five aggregates in their works on Buddhism, but none have thoroughly explained their respective functions. According to Boisvert, the five aggregates and dependent origination are closely related, explaining the process which binds us to samsara. Boisvert notes that the Pancha Upadanakanda does not incorporate all human experience. Vedana may transform into either Niramisa or Nekama Sita Vedana, Vedana which is not harmful, or into Amisa or Gayasita Vedana, a type of sensation which may act as an agent bringing about the future arising of craving and aversion. This is determined by sana. According to Boisvert, not all sana belong to the sana skanda. The wholesome sanna recognize the three marks of existence dukkha, anatta, anicca, and do not belong to the sanna skanda. Unwholesome sanna is not conducive to insight, and without proper sanna, the person is likely to generate craving, clinging and becoming. As with sanna, not all sankara belong to the sankara skanda. Since not all sankhara produce future effects, according to Johannes Bronckhorst, the notion that the five aggregates are not self has to be viewed in light of debates about liberating knowledge 
the knowledge of Atman which was deemed liberating by the Vedic traditions. Bronckhorst notes that, "...knowledge of the self plays no useful role on the Buddha's path to liberation." What is important is not to grasp at the forms, sounds, odors, phalovers, objects, and mental properties which are perceived with the six sense organs these include mind as the sixth sense organ. The insight that the aggregates are not self-aids in letting of this grasping, Miri Albahari also objects to the usual understanding of the skandhas as denoting the absence of any self. Al-Bihari has argued that the khandas do not necessarily constitute the entirety of the human experience, and that the Hindu concept of Atman eternal soul is not explicitly negated by Pali canon. According to Albani, "...anatta is best understood as a practical strategy rather than as a metaphysical doctrine." To Al-Bihari, Nibbana is an ever-present part of human nature, which is gradually "...uncovered." by the cessation of ignorance. <inaudible> Understanding in Theravada Abhidhamma The early Buddhist schools developed detailed analyses and overviews of the teachings found in the sutras, called Abhidharma. Each school developed its own Abhidharma. The best known nowadays is the Theravada Abhidhamma, but the Sarvastivada Abhidharma was historically very influential, and has been preserved partly in the Chinese Agama. <laughs> Six sense bases The internal and external sense bases together form the Six sense bases. In this description, found in texts such as Salayatana Samyutta, the coming together of an object and a sense organ results in the arising of the corresponding consciousness. According to Bhikkhu Bodhi, the Theravada tradition teaches that the six sense bases accommodate all the factors of existence. It is the all and apart from which nothing at all exists and are empty of a self and of what belongs to the self." The suttas themselves don't describe this as an alternative of the skandhas, it is in the Abhidhamma, striving to a single all-inclusive system, that the five aggregates and the six sense bases are explicitly connected. The first five external sense bases visible form, sound, smell, taste and touch, and the first five internal sense bases eye, ear, nose, tongue and body are part of the form aggregate. The mental sense object i.e. mental objects overlap the first four aggregates form, feeling, perception and formation. The mental sense organ mind is comparable to the aggregate of consciousness. Bodhi states the six sense bases as a vertical view of human experiences while the aggregates is a horizontal temporal view. The Theravada Buddhist meditation practice on sense bases is aimed at both removing distorted cognitions such as those influenced by cravings, conceits and opinions, as well as uprooting all conceivings in all its guises. Eighteen Dottas and Four Paramattas The Eighteen Dottas, six external bases, six internal bases, and six consciousnesses, function through the five aggregates. These Dottas can be arranged into six triads, each triad composed of a sense object, a sense organ, and sense consciousness. The Abhidhamma and post canonical Pali texts create a meta scheme for the Sutta Pitaka's conceptions of aggregates, sense bases, and Dottas. Elements. This meta scheme is known as the four Paramattas or ultimate realities three conditioned, one unconditioned. Material phenomena, rupa, form. Mind or consciousness sata. Mental factors sedasikas, the nama factors sensation, perception and formation Nibbana <laughs> Twelve Nidanas The Twelve Nidanas is a linear list of twelve elements from the Buddhist teachings which arise depending on the preceding link. 
While this list may be interpreted as describing the processes which give rise to rebirth, in essence it describes the arising of dukkha as a psychological process, without the involvement of an Atman. Scholars regard it to be a later synthesis of several older lists. The first four links may be a mockery of the Vedic Brahmanic cosmogony, as described in the Hymn of Creation of Veda X, 129 and the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. These were integrated with a branched list which described the conditioning of mental processes, akin to the five skandhas. Eventually, this branched list developed into the standard twelvefold chain as a linear list. According to Boisvert, the function of each of the aggregates, in their respective order, can be directly correlated with the theory of dependent origination, especially with the eight middle links, four of the five aggregates are explicitly mentioned in the following sequence, yet in a different order than the list of aggregates, which concludes with vijnana vijnana mental formations sankara samskara condition consciousness vijnana vijnana which conditions name and form nama rupa which conditions the precursors salayatana, fasa sparsa to sensations vedana, which in turn condition craving tana tursna and clinging upadana, which ultimately lead to the entire mass of suffering Kevalasa Dukkakanda, the interplay between the five aggregate model of immediate causation and the twelve nidana model of requisite conditioning is evident, for instance underlining the seminal role that mental formations have in both the origination and cessation of suffering. Satipatthana <inaudible> <inaudible> Mindfulness is thought to be applied to four upasana domains or bases, constantly watching sensory experience in order to prevent the arising of cravings which would power future experience into rebirths, which also overlap with the skandhas. The four domains are mindfulness of the body, kaya, mindfulness of feelings or sensations. Vedana, Mindfulness of mind or consciousness, sata, and mindfulness of dhammas. According to Zhegosh Polak, the four upasana have been misunderstood by the developing Buddhist tradition, including Theravada, to refer to four different foundations. According to Polak, the four upasana do not refer to four different foundations of which one should be aware, but are an alternate description of the jhanas, describing how the samskaras are tranquilized. The six sense bases which one needs to be aware of Kayanupasana. Contemplation on Vedanas, which arise with the contact between the senses and their objects Vedananupasana. The altered states of mind to which this practice leads Chittanupasana. The development from the five hindrances to the seven factors of enlightenment Dhammanupasana. Understanding in the Mahayana tradition The Mahayana developed out of the traditional schools, introducing new texts and putting other emphases in the teachings, especially sunyata and the bodhisattva ideal. <inaudible> India The Prajnaparamita teachings developed from the 1st century BCE onward. It emphasizes the emptiness of everything that exists. This means that there are no eternally existing essences, since everything is dependently originated. The skandhas too are dependently originated, and lack any substantial existence. According to Red Pine, the Prajnaparamita texts is a historical reaction to some early Buddhist Abhidhammas. Specifically, it is a response to Sarvastivada teachings that phenomena or its constituents are real. The Prajnaparamita notion of emptiness is also consistent with the Theravada Abhidhamma. This is formulated in the Heart Sutra. The Sanskrit version of the Prajnaparamita Ridaya Sutra. Heart Sutra 
which may have been composed in China from Sanskrit texts, and later back translated into Sanskrit, states that the five skandhas are empty of self-existence, and famously states form is emptiness, emptiness is form the same as true with feelings, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness. The Madhyamaka school elaborates on the notion of the middle way. Its basic text is the Mulamadhyamakakarika, written by Nagarjuna, who refuted the Sarvastivada conception of reality, which reifies dhammas. The simultaneous non-reification of the self and reification of the skandhas has been viewed by some Buddhist thinkers as highly problematic. The Yogacara school further analyzed the workings of the mind, elaborated on the concept of nama rupa and the five skandhas, and developed the notion of the eight consciousnesses. China Sunyata, in Chinese texts, is wu, nothingness. In these texts, the relation between absolute and relative was a central topic in understanding the Buddhist teachings. The aggregates convey the relative or conventional experience of the world by an individual, although absolute truth is realized through them. Commenting on the Heart Sutra, D. T. Suzuki notes, when the sutra says that the five skandhas have the character of emptiness, the sense is, no limiting qualities are to be attributed to the absolute, while it is immanent in all concrete and particular objects, it is not in itself definable. The Tathagatagarbha sutras, treating the idea of the Buddha nature, developed in India but played a prominent role in China. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras, on occasion, speak of the ineffable skandhas of the Buddha, beyond the nature of worldly skandhas and beyond worldly understanding. In the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra the Buddha tells of how the Buddha's skandhas are in fact eternal and unchanging. The Buddha's skandhas are said to be incomprehensible to unawakened vision. Tibet. The Vajrayana tradition further develops the aggregates in terms of Mahamudra epistemology and tantric reifications. Referring to Mahamudra teachings, Chogyam Trungpa identifies the form aggregate as the solidification of ignorance Pali, avia, skt, avidya, allowing one to have the illusion of possessing ever dynamic and spacious wisdom Pali, via, skt, vidya, and thus being the basis for the creation of a dualistic relationship between self and other. According to Trungpa Rinpoche, the five skandhas are a set of Buddhist concepts which describe experience as a five-step process, and that the whole development of the five skandhas less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as an attempt on our part to shield ourselves from the truth of our insubstantiality while the practice of meditation is to see the transparency of this shield trungpa rinpoche writes 2001 p 38 SOME of the details of tantric iconography are developed from Abhidharma that is, in this context, detailed analysis of the aggregates. Different colors and feelings of this particular consciousness, that particular emotion, are manifested in a particular deity wearing such and such a costume, of certain particular colors, holding certain particular scepters in his hand. Those details are very closely connected with the individualities of particular psychological processes. See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>